วัสดีค่ะ and welcome back to b r a i n s i g h t with me กอนกาโนชิดพัน reporting to you news on Buddhist activities from around the world and keep watching if you're interested in the meditation research the Buddhist monastic order of Batum Thani Province the Magaya Foundation along with other Buddhist organizations held the massive alms giving ceremony to help the flood victims in Thailand The Buddhist monastic order of Batum Thani Province, along with Rakbun Raksila Five Club, Tourism Council of Batum Thani Province, the Order of Fresh Market Network, the Lat Thai, Housing Development Union, Konglung District, and the Magaya Foundation, hosted the massive alms giving ceremony to help the flood victims in Thailand and Laos. More than 10,000 venerable monks and Buddhist devotees took part in the ceremony, started on 22nd September 2019, at the Lat Thai Konglung District, Batum Thani Province, Thailand. All foods from the almsgiving will be donated and distributed to the flood victims. According to a report by the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies of September 2019, Flash flooding and landslides have affected more than 100 districts across 32 provinces in Thailand since 29 August 2019, when Storm Pado crossed in the northeast and northern parts of the country. The government of Thailand has announced emergency assistance plans in 14 provinces and conducted evacuations in 10 provinces, including Amnatarun, Konken, Peshabun, Pisanulok, Pichit, Roy Ed, Sisaket, Sukhothai, Ubon Rajasthani, and Yasothon. Rejoice in your merit and thank you floodlist.com for the information. Next, the U.S. Gallery CHA create online platform for the Korean Buddhist paintings. Buddhist paintings from the Korean Kingdom are considered some of the world's most delicate religious artworks. Currently, about 160 Korean Buddhist paintings are extant across the globe, and the freer and secular galleries of the Smithsonian Institution join hands with the Cultural Heritage Administration, or CHA, to present those in the United States in detail at the dedicated website. The freer and secular galleries develop a digital catalog, Korea Buddhist painting, a closer look, featuring high-resolution images and comprehensive information on 16 Korea Buddhist paintings in the collection of eight American museums with funding from the CHA. Chase F. Robinson, director of the freer and secular galleries, said this online catalog opened on September 21st represents an important international collaboration and demonstrates how museums can digitally advance research on a rare collection of Korean artworks. The website had six sections including objects, people, essays, resources, selected bibliography, and patent library. The patent library section offers information on patterns appearing in the Korean Buddhist paintings, which are unique and can be distinguished from Chinese or Japanese Buddhist paintings around the same time. The 16 paintings on view are from eight institutions, Metropolitan Museum of Art, Museum of Fine Arts, Boston, Asian Art Museum, San Francisco, Brooklyn Museum, Arthur M. Sackler Museum, Howard University Art Museums, Cleveland Museum of Art and Rhode Island School of Design Museum, as well as the Freer and Sackler Galleries. Thank you, KoreaTimes.com, for the news, and check out the link below to take a glimpse on this Korean Buddhist paintings. Moving on to our next news, the new research revealed that the heartfulness meditation can cultivate gratitude. Heartfulness meditation can contribute to cultivating gratitude among practitioners, a study said. The study published in the International Journal of Recent Scientific Research has confirmed that heartfulness meditation, the popular meditation practice around the world, helps to create a sense of gratitude among its practitioners. 
The awareness of the benefits of gratitude on the general well-being of a person is increasingly becoming apparent, and numerous studies have supported the same, Heartfulness Institute said. The study involved a cross-sectional survey conducted online in November 2018. Participants consisted 1,746 heartfulness meditators and 1,159 non-meditators who responded to a questionnaire using a 7-point Likert scale rated from 1 to 7, strongly disagree to strongly agree. The data were grouped according to the demographic, social and health information reported, such as gender, age, martial status, occupation, nature of work, health, place of residence, and family system. And thank you, Times of India, for the information. Moving on to our last news this week, Bhutan is now practicing mindfulness meditation to increase the country's gross national happiness. Today, Bhutan is considered a living example where gross national happiness reflects the understanding of human development and happiness. Measuring this progress indicator is extremely important for the holistic development of a society. Now, the small kingdom of Bhutan is showing the world the power and value of equal and harmonious society. The constitution stipulates the state shall strive to promote those conditions that will enable the pursuit of gross national happiness. Mindfulness along with focus and agility promotes kindness, compassion, joy, equanimity, peace of mind, wisdom and contentment, which are the important ingredient of human happiness and progress. Taking GNS to the next level, Bhutan is now introducing mindfulness and emotional intelligence meditation to all the schools and government institutions. They feel it is one of the best ways to harness human potential and cultivating realistic happiness. Bhutan Honorable Minister Leon Paul Noble Vangshak acknowledges the power of mindfulness as one of the ways to find and fulfill the happiness of Bhutanese people. Through practices of mindfulness meditation, they are training teachers, government officials, and creating a culture of compassion and empathy for all its people. In his belief, through a change with educators and government officials, a culture of happiness and well-being can be reinforced. Thank you, FirstPost.com, for the news. If you're interested in practicing meditation, here is the first class quality meditation training for you, the Magaya Meditation Retreat in Khao Yai, Thailand. Definitely, I love meditation, but my meditation is not good enough. I'm here to um, continue to the advanced level and I think I um, would like to know more about the, uh, the method of how to make it easier. We get a lot of um, personal one-on-one -on -one instruction, which I think is really important because when you at other meditation retreats, it's only general information. But when you actually get to speak in the group to the instructor and they're helping you get past your obstacles every day, it makes a really big difference in how your meditation develops over the, the duration of the course. How amazing that the teaching man has been well trained and the way that they have sum up everything is just perfect. I know exactly, you know, I've been practicing for so long and I always wanted to have a perfect formula and the content just to make it's so much easier for me to understand and everything that they uh, put in this uh, program, easy to understand and even you don't have the basic uh, Dhammagaya meditation at all, it would be easily for people who actually would be able to follow easily and it's just like a road map, everything's just perfect. This is the right thing, this is the right time. That 
Yeah, of course. The, every, everyone here on this retreat was extremely happy and uh, we were all extremely satisfied with the experience. I have repeated inner experience. Then um, I feel I'm more happy, more sabai, and pleased and joyful all the day. Um, I would say it has gone a lot better because of the guidance and everything that I got from here. I think it's very great because I love the accommodation, I love this place and the retreat, every activities that have is it's excellent. Although I train myself, meditate every day, but this retreat can let me learn more and more and get the inner peace a lot. So that is why I think I must let everyone know that this is the very good retreat and can let everyone learn more for their meditation and can improve themselves. A shortcut, I feel, to inner experience. It can be so easy and so simple. So we just have to apply the correct technique, the correct method. And now I have the privilege to benefit from this knowledge. I would definitely like to share it with everybody at home. So I feel like when I go back, um, I have a whole set of strategies that I really didn't have before. I mean, maybe I knew theoretically, but to have different teaching monks explain very clearly and discuss with other meditators, um, I think it's invaluable. That, you know, it's, it's a really good practical way. If I don't get it right, then I can just stop and start again. So that's been wonderful. That's been a very good positive experience. I'm sure that if they came to this place, they would enjoy it, they would learn a lot. So if there's any place I could recommend, this would be a good one. So that is also very surprising. In, in fact, surprising in a way, I myself am surprised because I did not think I would be able to meditate. Now that is tricky, but yes, because you feel various experiences that you've never noticed before. Or maybe it's the experience you have noticed, but it's in a different level so you get to realize it in a different way. So for me, so for me, it was an emptiness. The first feeling that I got when I was focusing was an emptiness. Within that moment, that void, you feel restless. You feel you don't really care about anything. Then there are some external lights. I don't think there were internal lights, but Prachan said, any sort of light, as long as you see, it's a reward. Rejoicing. So what have I learned from the retreat? As I said before, first thing is keep it simple. We have to learn to keep it simple. Do not overcomplicate things. Second of all, everyone thinks meditation is about reaching this ultimate goal this goal where you will find inner experience. Of course, that is the ultimate goal, but everyone tries to shoot directly, take a shortcut, but there are no shortcuts. So that's what our tutor monks also always teach us is, there are various waypoints to get there. However, these waypoints, again, I think many people, including me, used to think meditation is the, let's call it the vehicle that takes us to those waypoints, but it's not. It's just a tool that is guiding us there. Eventually, it is us, our mind, our body, and our practice that takes us there. And eventually, if we're lucky enough, reach the inner experience. So I'd like to invite all my friends and families from the bottom of my heart, because in this retreat, I've seen people from various nationalities, background, and various levels of experience with and without meditation practice that have come here and enjoyed and learned to let go. I'm certain anyone, people I know and people I don't, with any sort of experience or background, will be able to come in and learn a lot. Very simple, I was a little surprised. Because I've been trying a bit too much and never get any good result. After Pajan teach us that method, I feel really relaxed, really light, 
weightless, not light, weightless. And um, I start to see a little dot, and then that dot start to come closer, brighter, bigger. I was, I feel so amazing. I don't know, I feel very, very happy. I wanted to cry. I wanted to cry, and, and oh, my, my hands, like, my arm, hair, like, stick up. Um, I was very happy. Um, I think this program is perfect for everyone. It's not just people who have lots of experience in meditate. Even novice or who never meditate before. If they come to this program, I'm pretty sure they will get some like nice inner some experience, more or less. Be a part of this life-changing retreat experience. Give yourself this gift. Inner peace. Just one click and you can be a part of this amazing meditation retreat. As always, let us end at Brainside with the Dharma quote. As long as there are waves in the ocean, do not expect that everything would run smoothly. The way of life, as there are light and darkness, it is no difference in life that there is up and down. And that's all for us today. Make sure you check out all episodes of our at Bright Insight news program by visiting our GBN Global Buddhist Network official website, gbnus.com, or from the Facebook page, GBNUS. Thank you for joining us, and see you again next week. Swadiha! So